The first episode of this anthology, titled Lot 36, was a great way to kickstart the succession of horrific tales that we're set to see over the coming few days. Based on a veteran called Nick Appleton and the acquisition of a lot numbered 36, it provides a dark history on the previous owner that for a man in the present day is trying to pay off some debts that have taken over his life. We see a 12 hour window that changes Nick's life for good. So with that, I thought I'd recap, break down and explain all that there was to take away from this first episode. So let's get into it. Here is Cabinet of Curiosities episode one, lot 36, ending explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The episode got its name based on the lot that the character Nick purchased in an auction, number 36. At the start of the episode, we saw an individual whom it previously belonged to, and we saw that from the off, he came across as an interesting and peculiar person. One of the first shots that we saw was a photo of a person above his television, which we later found out was his missing sister, who had a significant importance at the end of the episode. We saw him cutting up raw meat that it looked as though he was collecting, and we later found out that it was because he was feeding the demon that was present at the back of his lot. He would visit it every day since the 1940s, and this was so that he'd be able to feed the entity that he allowed to use his sister's body as a host. He essentially sacrificed her by using the seance table, candles, and the four books in order to summon the darkness and allow it to have a physical presence in this world. Upon his death, we saw Nick Appleton, an individual who was racist and now filled with a lot of hatred from fighting in the war, purchased the lot. I thought it was a nice touch that when we were first introduced to him, we heard the world from his perspective, with the ringing in the ear like he mentioned at the end. Nick had debts that needed to be paid and it amounted to around $12,000, and he had people on his tail about it. He was a man that was full of hate and rage due to the war sucking him up and spitting him out. He lost the feeling of who he was and also people he loved. With the acquisition of the lot, I felt that after about 18 minutes of the episode, I realized that when he said how it was smaller than what it should be, it seemed suspicious and made me think that the previous owner modified it and that there could be somebody hidden beneath the back. This was due to Eddie stating how the lots used to be bigger, were connected and had been like that since the 40s. And with the elderly man visiting it every day, it made sense that he was going to be checking up on somebody that he was most likely keeping captive there. It was only partway through the episode when Nick went to visit Agatha and Roland, where we found out about the demonic nature of his behaviours and possessions, where it then later meant that there'd be a demon that was being kept back there. Nick on his endeavours at the storage unit met Amelia, whom he'd previously purchased a lot of a different number of by mistake and she was pleading with him in order to be able to get her stuff back. He used her as a way of taking out his anger, rage, frustration, and expressed this in the form of racist slurs. This was something that eventually came back to haunt him and ultimately cause his demise. Once Nick was aware of the demonic nature of the possessions and the value of $300,000 that it was all worth, he drove himself and Roland to the lot where they realized the hollowness of the back wall and saw that it led to a back room where we got the reveal that Dottie Walmart, the man at the start's sister was kept back there, and he'd used her as a vessel for the entity to lay host in, and had been there since she went missing all of those years ago. The fourth book that they were searching for was at the back, and with Nick's arrogance to the situation tying into how he'd been for the entirety of the episode, he stepped into the circle, causing the demon to awaken, be betrayed, and the fourth book to burn like we heard would happen. The demon then essentially broke free after killing Roland, who we saw was just in awe of the situation, which was a bit strange, and it then led to Nick trying to escape the storage unit housing, where the demon was after him for the betrayal. All of the doors were locked, and as one would predict, Amelia, who had been lingering around the unit for some time, was going to be his only way to safe haven. However, she didn't open the door, and instead allowed the demon to come after Nick, ultimately leading him to be killed. Whilst the demon which was personified by Dottie Volmar was the thing that caused Nick to die, it was Nick's internal demons that sentenced him to death. His anger, rage, arrogance, and racist attitude towards Amelia was the very thing that got him locked in there and prevented him from escaping. Tying back to what we heard at the start on the television, I prefer to think of peace, not war. No nation can stand against a world united. Nick was bitter towards others and was standing against their right to be able to be in the country, and it was his expression of that attitude of entitlement that was what ultimately sentenced him to death. Demons, whether they be internal or external, they'll come and get you. And this episode told that tale in a visual and metaphorical way. 
I thought this episode was a good one. It kickstarted the series in a haunting way that had me on the edge of my seat. It was dark, there were very brief and subtle jump moments, but it had the right amount of pacing to lead up to the crescendo that was created at the end. It was eerie in the sense that you didn't know what was going to be occurring next. Characters such as Roland and Agatha provided a haunting edge to it, but you also had the realness of Eddie and Nick which provided two different sides to the fences. The dark green, grey and black hue and grey that the episode had really provided the tone in terms of a visual perspective, and the motif that would be repeated audibly when one of the demonic possessions would be mentioned or somebody from the Volmar family would be spoken about, it was notable and provided an unsettling experience. I thought the actor who played Nick did a great job in the role. It's rare that we have a main character in a show that we're watching that we're not supposed to like or is designed to be admired by the audience even though we don't like, but I felt no likability towards him at all. He was destined to be doomed from the off and his fate was sealed from the moment that he got out of the car. The attitude that he conveyed was extremely dislikable and I feel the actor did a great job at delivering this character. I feel Eddie was positioned as a likable character who was kind compared to Nick to provide the visual contrast on screen especially with the way that they both treated Amelia in completely different ways. To show that if you're kind, there's a strong chance that things will less likely go wrong. As if Nick was kind to Amelia when they first encountered each other, he may have found himself surviving and making it out of Lot 36. We've not had an anthology for a while. One that's good anyway, since Black Mirror, Inside Number 9 or The Twilight Zone. So I'm hoping this, even if it is a yearly occurrence around Halloween, it could cement its place on our screens. I like the fact that it's in a world more like the Twilight Zone where anything is possible and the creativity of the writing can be fleshed out as much as possible because there are no rules and regulations to the world. After one episode, it provided something different, haunting, stylistic, with a deeper meaning than what we're watching and it didn't compromise anything in the process. I'd recommend giving this first episode a watch because I don't think you'll regret it. I'll be covering all of the episodes over the coming days so be sure to stick around. So. There you have it, Cabinet of Curiosities Episode 1, Lot 36, Ending Explained. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the I button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of Lot 36? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.